Welcome, young scholars, to Mobile, Alabama, the year of our Lord, 1845. I am Captain James Montgomery, once a proud servant of the United States Navy, now a humble shipbuilder and custodian of tales from the high seas and corridors of power. You see, our young nation, barely out of its swaddling clothes, had ambitions larger than the vast Atlantic. It wasn't just about claiming the land from Atlantic to Pacific. No, it was a quest for global recognition, a seat at the table of world powers. Consider the War of 1812, where I cut my teeth as a naval officer. It wasn't just a skirmish against the British. It symbolized our determination to assert ourselves, to protect our trade routes and sailors from the overreach of European powers. We were David against Goliath, proving that we would not be bullied into submission. But our ambitions didn't stop at mere defense. We thirsted for more land, more resources. The spirit of manifest destiny was in the air, a belief that it was our God-given right to expand across the continent. This expansion, it wasn't just about land, it was about economic might, about establishing a network of trade that would make the United States a commercial powerhouse. Now let's not gloss over the darker chapters. Our westward push came at a dire cost to the Native American tribes. The Trail of Tears, a blot on our nation's conscience, was a stark reminder of the price of expansion. We, as a nation, struggled to reconcile our quest for growth with the principles of liberty and justice we so dearly held. Turning our gaze southward, the Monroe Doctrine of 1823 was a bold declaration. President Monroe, declaring that the Western Hemisphere was no longer open for European colonization, effectively proclaimed our backyard off-limits to European powers. It wasn't just a policy. It was a statement of confidence, a warning that the United States would regard any European interference in the Americas as a hostile act. This doctrine was a cornerstone of our foreign policy. It reflected a growing belief in American exceptionalism, the idea that our nation had a unique destiny to foster democracy and liberty across the Western Hemisphere. It was about influence, about shaping the political landscape of our neighboring nations to ensure our security and economic interests. But remember, influence is a double-edged sword. Our interventions in Latin America, often under the guise of the Monroe Doctrine, were not always welcomed. We walked a fine line between being a protector and a hegemon, a guardian of liberty and a self-serving giant. In my years at sea, I witnessed the transformation of our Navy from a fledgling fleet to a force that could project power across oceans. Our ships, once mere defenders of our shores, became instruments of diplomacy and symbols of our growing might. And so here we stand in 1845, in a bustling port like Mobile. Each ship that docks, each barrel of goods that rolls onto these wharfs, is a testament to our burgeoning role on the world stage. Our journey from a cluster of rebellious colonies to a nation with eyes on every horizon has been tumultuous, often contradictory, but always driven by a relentless pursuit of what we believed was our manifest destiny. I leave you with this thought. As we chart the course of our nation's history, let us ponder the wakes we leave behind, the triumphs, the missteps, and the unending quest to define what it truly means to be the United States of America.